Good afternoon um, to everybody who is um, who has joined this webinar. Um, this is Bulen from UNEPFI. I will share my camera so you can see me. Um, to our panelists, uh, if any of you are able to share your cameras, please go ahead and do so as well. Um, so I will hand over to Demetrius. You should, if you have um, uh, joined the webinar online, you should be able to see the presentation. Um, I'll hand over to Demetrius um, to get us started, and then he will hand over to um, Emily and then Ginny, who are members of the core group that have worked on developing these principles. And um, once again, thank you for joining. Um, if you have questions um, during the presentation, um, please do write them down. Um, alternatively, at the end, you can put your hand up um, and I'll unmute you um, so that you can then um, raise your question. All right, with that, I hand over to you, Demetrius. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Pulen. Good afternoon from Athens, everybody. Um, I would just like to make an introduction to the objectives of the principles. Uh, when the economic crisis broke out in 2008, the bank sustained a big blow in the trust that their customers and clients have. And um, still 10 years later, banks are struggling to, to regain the trust that they lost. And we all understand that, you know, trust is very, very important for doing business, um, uh, especially in the banking uh, industry. Uh, and this, this, this was actually the driver behind the uh, initiative that uh, UNIPFI uh, started in early 2018 uh, when a group of 28 banks, all members of UNIPFI, uh, responded to a call by the Secretariat of UNIPFI, got together and they started working on, on the principles on the principles that we are presenting today. Um, the reason why we, we we started working on these principles and, and actually what the principles aspire to is actually to define and shape can we the ultimate and ultimately to secure the banking industry's role in society and in the economy in the new in the 21st century. It is very, very important that uh, we, through these uh, principles, to try to strengthen the trust and to get the customers engaged. This is very, very important if we want to achieve the goals of society, which are expressed in the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals by the United Nations and in the Paris Climate Agreement. The next issue that the principles touch upon is to enable banks to become credibly to credibly demonstrate and to communicate their purpose and what they can contribute to society which means that they can become more open more transparent in how they communicate with society and the last objective of the principles is to set the global benchmark for responsible banking and to provide a guidance a practical guidance on how to actually implement each of these six principles that we will be presenting. Shall we move on to the next slide? Now, what are the key features uh, surrounding these principles? First of all, the principles touch on all levels within a bank, on the transaction level, on the portfolio level, and on a strategic level. The Principles aspire to align the banks with the goals of society as these are explicitly expressed in the Paris Climate Agreement and in the Sustainable Development Goals and in other national or regional frameworks. Another very important feature in these principles is setting targets. It is not just a question of endorsing generally speaking principles and saying that you know i'm a good bank i'm a responsible bank because i have signed up to these principles we have to prove that by setting targets and setting targets on all the levels the transactional level the portfolio level and the strategic level and making these targets known to the public so the next feature which is very important and to bear in mind is the transparency and accountability. 
we will have to make targets we will have to decide on targets we have to report on the progress of targets and we have to be honest about what we do how we measure our impacts either the positive ones or the negative ones and how do we increase our positive impacts and how on the in the, at the same time we decrease our negative impacts and the last feature which is also very important is that the the six principles are accompanied by an implementation guidance so for every principle there are very practical tips that are provided in how a bank regardless of where they stand in terms of you know how mature they are in in in, in implementing sustainability uh in in financing um how they can they can use practical um, um, uh, tools so that they can implement, measure, and evaluate the impact that they have. So these are the major features that we will be discussing and seeing uh, in the principles. So we'll move to the next slide. Well, the question is, who do these principles uh, apply to? And these principles uh, are made for banks, for any kind of bank, small banks, big banks, banks that have no experience and banks that are more advanced in sustainability issues. The principles were presented in, in Paris in last November and they are up for public consultation. And this period will last until the end of May, after which the final uh, document with the principles and the implementation guidance and the framework and the reviewing and the reporting that follows the principles will be released and signed off in September in New York. Any bank can join and genuinely commit to sustainability and to becoming a responsible bank. Any bank can set targets and ambitions in line with their context, their strengths and their starting point. The most important thing that we have to bear in mind is that we have to prove to the society, to our stakeholders, that we improve every year, that every year that there will be a progress, no matter where we start from. And this is something that we should bear in mind when it comes to implementing the principles. I think this wraps up the introduction and we could move on to Emily, if this is okay. Um, uh, Demetrius, that's fine. Um, the slide that's currently showing um, just um, shows the 28 um, founding banks that have been involved, um, as Demetrius said, in developing the principles. Um, they are from five continents, um, and you know the businesses, business um, models, um, customer base um, differs um, um, quite significantly. Um, and so, you know, we've had these 28 voices um, coming together to develop the principles. So, on to um, a bit about the actual principles themselves, uh, and uh, and how they've come together. So what you'll see is that we have developed six key principles uh, to shape our future. So there's uh, a very tight, carefully considered um, six key principles. Uh, focus, as I said, around alignment, impact, your clients, your stakeholders, how you'll then govern and set targets and transparency and, and accountability. So let's step into that um, with a bit more detail. So the first principle is around alignment. And this is, as I mentioned before, very much around how you align your business strategy to be consistent with and contribute to an individual's needs and society's goals as set out in the SDGs and the Paris Climate Agreement, as well as the relevant national frameworks where you operate. Um, and this is about focusing where you can have the most significant impact. So at its heart, alignment with SDGs and the Paris Climate Agreement and how you align your business strategy to address those key areas. And then for you to identify where you can have the, the areas of most significant positive and negative environmental, social and economic impacts. 
and then be willing to set targets to align your business with this. On to principle number two, this is around impact. And so building on that idea of both positive and negative impacts, this is about how your bank will continuously increase positive impacts while reducing the negative impacts on and managing risks to people and environment resulting from activities, products and services. So this is about um, identifying um, and being transparent around those positive and negative impacts um, on uh, through the nature of your business and then setting um, and defining KPIs to address, um, reduce, mitigate those negative impacts and to increase or scale up those positive impacts. And then to undertake forward looking assessments of the risks, the sustainability risks that, and opportunities at transaction, portfolio and strategic levels. So it's really understanding how you operationalize this at multi, multiple levels of your organization over time. And again, recognizing that different banks are at different levels of maturity, but it's actually how you build this out over time and building it through um, the nature of how your business operates. Uh, on to the next uh, principle. This is about who. This is about your clients and your customers. This is about how you work responsibly with your clients and customers to help them encourage sustainable practices and enable economic activities to create shared prosperity for current and future generations. So this is really recognising that uh, how we can have an impact as a bank is very much around who our customers and clients are and reaching into their activities and how we can support them to achieve these positive impacts. So it's about how, supporting them to adopt new technologies, business models and practices. Um, it's around um, supporting them and working with them in the development of new products and services or sustainability related incentives and contract conditions. And helping working through um, even to the, the retail end of your business, um, if you are a retail facing bank, around ensuring that your customers have the knowledge and skills to effectively manage their finances. So thinking through that um, what we, in Australia certainly we call responsible banking and supporting the consumers around um, ensuring that they've got the, the, the knowledge that they need and, and the financial literacy that they need. So thinking through um, principle three, very much around um, that opportunity that working with clients and customers presents to scale impact. Uh, on to um, principle four. And this is around your stakeholders, again, widening out. And this is about proactively and responsibly consulting, engaging and partnering with relevant stakeholders to achieve society's goals. So really, I guess, tapping into principle, um, uh, sorry, uh, um, goal 17 in terms of the SDGs around understanding how you engage more broadly and work more proactively with stakeholders. Um, and working with stakeholders who are directly and indirectly affected by the bank's business practices and decisions, and then working with them to better understand the material issues, that is the, the big issues in your strategy um, and business practices, those issues that matter most both to your business and to your stakeholders, and ensuring that you're prioritising those, but also tapping into those to create partnerships to enable your bank to achieve more. And of course, it's also about engagement with regulators and policy makers. Um, to ensure that um, you're working with them in a way that's aligned with the goals and the objectives of these principles and together you're advocating um, for uh, sustainable policies. Uh, and then on to uh, principle five, which is about uh, governance and target setting. So this is around um, implementing um, your commitment to the principles through effective governance and a culture of responsible banking and that you're demonstrating ambition and accountability by setting public targets relating to your most sustainable, oh, sorry, your most significant impact. So this is about ensuring that you've got a, a framework and, and a mechanism and a way in which you build this through your business and that you can actually drive um, performance of the organisation to be aligned with these impacts. So you've got clear roles and responsibilities amongst people or leaders in your business with sufficient status, influence and the resources across all the functional areas of your bank to drive this forward. You've got policies and management systems to integrate sustainability objectives into decision making processes across your bank. And that you're, active, um, you're actively communicating that top level buy-in um, and integrating sustainability targets into performance assessments, remuneration schemes, and promoting um, and promotion discussions. So you're really operationalizing um, these principles um, through how your business operates and you've got a clear governance framework around how you achieve that. 
And then on to principle six, which is around transparency and accountability. Um, so this is about periodically reviewing individual and collective implementation of the principles and being transparent about and being accountable for the positive and negative impacts and contribution to society's goals. So of course, this is about reporting. Um, and within 14 months of becoming a signatory, um, we're looking for banks to publicly report on significant positive and negative impacts and how you're implementing the principles. And also being willing to undergo um, an annual individual review process. Um, and the requirements of that will, will differ depending on, on the self-declared level of your organisation in terms of where you're at and where you're willing um, to, to be assessed. Hi everyone, um, thank you again so much for joining and thanks um, Marius and Dimitrios. Um, the next stage uh, we'd love to discuss with you today is the target setting and accountability piece. Um, it's obviously a very important piece embedded within a lot of the principles um, and we're extremely keen to have this as front and center as we're discussing the principles. Um, you will have noticed that two of the principles had um, specific references to the uh, transparency and accountability aspects of of the uh, of the principles um, in their title, and that was definitely intentional. So we aim to have that um, to to enable it to to really show that they were essential pieces. Um, so in terms of actually what this means in practice, um, I'll spend just a couple of minutes um, outlining the target setting requirements, and then also some of the elements of transparency and accountability, um, including some, some reporting um, discussions that we've had. Um, in terms of the target setting requirements, this really begins with um, a materiality assessment. So understanding uh, particularly where you have the most significant positive and negative social, economic and environmental impacts. So this can be part of a general um, annual review uh, around um, around what is a material impact for, for your institution. This is obviously going to be a diverse set of impacts across all of the banks um, that we would hope to join uh, uh, the principles. So, uh, you know, uh, I think Nehru, who's my colleague from Landsbank, um, was presenting this morning um, the same section, and, and he's going to have a very different uh, view on this than myself um, at Barclays uh, as more of a transatlantic bank. Um, in terms of the, the second phase, once we've identified the uh, materiality assessments, um, it's really making an ambition and setting out an ambition that really aligns with what your bank's um, natural impacts are. Um, and the goal would be within 12 months of becoming a signatory, um, which, as Demetrius said, um, begins in September 2019. Um, you can set objectives and you can set targets that really reflect the scale of your bank's operations um, and also are aligned with uh, the frameworks that we discussed in principle one, so around the SDGs and the Paris Climate Agreement, as well as um, relevant national and regional frameworks that are impacting um, different institutions around the world. Um, in terms of implementing kind of beyond the target, we have um, setting key performance indicators, allocating um, the resources and responsibilities, um, which is obviously a, a really essential piece, and then uh, establishing a monitoring and review um, of, of those targets. Um, and they can be published or kind of communicated wherever makes sense for, for your different institutions. Moving on to accountability. Um, so in... Um, so as part of the, the principles for responsible banking, we want um, it to be extremely credible, of course. Um, and so we want um, banks to, to express how you're, um, how you're implementing and how you're engaging with the principles for responsible banking in existing public reporting. We don't need kind of a new report um, that's created specifically for the PRB, but more so it's part of your in the fabric and really kind of tied into the existing um, reporting that you're already doing. Um, there's also a, a short um, template um, which would be submitted to the UNEPFI team, um, which would provide references to the existing um, 
uh, to the existing reporting where you reference and, and, and talk about the different impacts and positive and negative that you're having, um, and then kind of link essentially to each of those um, in the reporting. So it, it should be pretty low touch um, is the goal, um, but really kind of show and direct towards towards what, a, what you're doing already um, and in the broader context that you're already doing it. Um, Thanks, Pulang. Just moving on to reporting and review. Um, in terms of the different types of banks, so um, we have the, the concepts of a starter bank, an intermediate bank, and an advanced bank. So the three types of banks would have different um, requirements in terms of the target setting pieces as well as um, the progress pieces. Um, and that's really to enable this, this framework and the principles to be available to all types of banks around the world. We're really keen for this to be an inclusive framework. Um, across all of them, of course, is transparency. Um, it's a really Im important part. So really expressing um, what the, the material impacts you're having and, and reporting um, externally on those and, and being very transparent around what um, around how you can uh, improve and, and what steps can be made. Um, so if you're a starter bank, UNEPFI are able to engage with you more proactively around that. For an intermediate bank, um, which you're able to, to be again for 24 months, so the idea is you ratchet up to an advanced bank, um, you, the UNEPFI will ask you to um, improve um, once you discuss with them, but, um, and there will be certain requirements um, to do that. And then for an advanced bank, um, we are asking you to have that reviewed and have your reporting to UNEPFI reviewed by an insurer or an independent reviewer um, to um, to really showcase kind of what how you're achieving the, the requirements of the principles for responsible banking and um, to have that kind of looked at by a third party. Um, for a start event, you don't need to be thinking about target setting, although we do kind of recommend that that's started to think about as early as possible, given um, the timelines that it generally takes for, for institutions to think about targets. Um, so for an intermediate bank, um, uh, we'd expect to, to see some um, targets, but, and then uh, UNEPFI can provide feedback on that. And then for an advanced bank, again, um, we would expect the targets to be kind of reviewed um, by, by an assurer or by an independent reviewer. Um, and then finally, for an advanced bank, you're also um, look, asked to look at kind of the progress that you're making within the uh, principles for responsible banking so that it's not a static um, ask um, and then kind of keeping the same level for the next five years. It's, it's really taking steps every year and, and seeing what progress um, that you can make within your institutions. I will hand over to Ginny and Puleng, who I believe will be discussing implementation more, but thank you again for having me. Thank you very much, Emily. Um, before I hand over to Ginny, um, just to mention as well that um, consistent unexplained failure um, to basically address uh, shortcomings um, that a bank would be asked to, especially at an advanced bank, um, will result in the signatory being in the signatory being removed from the signatory list. Um, thanks again, Emily. I will now hand over to Ginny, um, who will go through implementation. Ginny, over to you. Hi, everybody. Hopefully, you can hear me okay, and there's no echoes on this line. Um, so, just to run through implementations, I mean, you've heard from all of my colleagues um, that we have come quite far already in terms of setting the principles, the basic ideas, and considering in terms of target setting and accountability in terms of, you know, what level of entry we are obviously very encompassing of and, and sensitive to the fact that a lot of banks um, are starting at very, very different levels. So, just Having set that sort of scene, um, what we're now interested in is also uh, to help banks to really align a bank's business strategies with SDGs. Um, probably you, ha if you're definitely if you're involved within sustainability, you will have started to set out um, and, and align your bank's businesses with SDGs. But actually, in practice, what does that look like, and how does it work? 
and perhaps you're interested in you know looking at some case studies from peers um, and really to get some guidance on how to better implement um, these strategies um, so in view in view of that really um, the implementation process really is a guidance that the core group has helped to um, uh, uh, to, to try and uh, to outline it is setting out the relevance of an intention behind each of those principles we um, just introduced and also um, the implementation guidance is quite comprehensive and it you know in terms of talking about how it can be implemented uh, implemented um, irrelevant of your level of uh, or of your um, uh, I guess your your ex expertise or your engagement already um, with aligning your business strategies <clears throat> so we have set out the core group itself uh, also with the UNEP FI, we've set out specific guidance under each of the principles for banks and so that's a very useful tool already in our and we're just starting out um, uh, uh, really for to look at different levels also of impact as well because based on impact studies I guess we're trying to seek what is the demand you know how do banks like yourselves or, or, or different um, from different regions uh, and also banks that concentrate on different products what is their demand in terms of helping them to implement um, some of these principles and in practice how do we help banks to really align with SDGs so really the core group is set up to work on certain methodologies that really help um, banks and financial institutions to really um, look at aligning and then um, <clears throat> next really I mean um, I've already alluded to the fact that support is very much available for the implementation of each of those principles we outlined um, so principles for res uh, responsible banking dashboard um, in, is in the process of being developed and I think uh, versions of that is already available um, and this really enables banks to do a self-assessment is a little bit uh, of a, a handy tool if you're kind of whether you're starting out or whether you're considering from quite a um, advanced stage um, just to look at how you fare with regards to your implementation um, and also you know even if you're quite advanced in the stage it helps you set out you know where you are and maybe um, you know future measures that you could take um, so in terms of support we the core group also offers case studies and also um, cutting-edge research um, really what that means is methodologies that uh, the core group is working on in, in, in respect to, to the SDGs so those are forthcoming so these are, are being worked on as we speak and also what will be really, really helpful re realistically is for banks to really look at um, peer learning from other UNEP FI members, um, particularly if you want to look at banks that might be similar to yourselves in terms of the regions you cover, countries you cover, or the sectors that you cover, is quite a, uh, you know, useful, I guess, as a support to look at what other people might be doing in this space. And obviously learning from mistakes, learning from also what works well, what doesn't work well, is, is going to be useful in terms of the implementation. And then we have set up already um, working groups really well, at the moment it's uh, one is looking at the impacts and also another one is looking at uh, the gap analysis really to help really support this implementation process um, surrounding SDGs and and, and also um, uh, you know we last but not least we have an annual feedback meeting so it's really engages with all the stakeholders and um, you know both the core group members and also stakeholders and uh, endorsers for example to, to seek feedback in terms of how uh, we can either better support um, banks in terms of implementation of these principles and also in terms of what you know what else we can be doing to improve the ways that we are helping the support so um, I, I'll leave uh, you know more time for questions because I think that's the interesting part. I think for each different individual bank, implementation will mean very different things. But I guess the, in a nutshell, the core group and also the UNEP FI is there really here to try and uh, uh, do a bit of hand-holding in terms of how to go through the implementation process. Thanks, Pauline. Back to you. Thank you very much, Ginny. Um...
All right, so I will um, uh, take over from here. Um, Stephen uh, Hibbert, who is the banking chair committee, sorry, the banking committee chair, um, is unfortunately unable to make it, so I will um, cover uh, the going forward slides on his behalf. Um, so as many of you would be aware, um, we the principles, the draft principles, uh, were launched on the 26th of November um, for um, public consultation. Um, they will be in this consultation period until the end of um, May 2019. Um, so we really encourage um, banks and stakeholders um, to have a look at the principles, um, to have a look at the implementation guidance, and to um, give us feedback. We we, we really um, do ask for feedback. Um, so that we can kind of just make sure that, you know, there aren't any gaps, there isn't anything that hasn't been considered. Um, so we encourage that. And um, also from this period until um, September 2019, um, banks and stakeholders um, can endorse the principles. I'll explain a bit more what that means um, on the next slide. Um, the signing ceremony of the principles, so the principles will be, avail will be available uh, for signature in September. Um, from May until sort of August, we will be finalizing the document, um, amending when necessary um, in accordance with the feedback that we receive from the consultation period. So um, becoming an endorser. So when a bank becomes an endorser of the principles, they signal um, their support for this initiative, for a sustainable banking system and for a global banking industry that is aligned with and contributes to society's goals. They also signal their commitment to take a leadership role in addressing pressing global and local social and environmental challenges. Um, and also importantly, their intention to sign and commit to the principles um, once they become available for signature in September, 2019. So this is very much focused on banks, but as I said, um, stakeholders can also endorse the principles, and that really is uh, them showing support for the initiative um, and perhaps even getting involved um, in events um, that UNIPFI and or the founding banks, um, uh, you know, plan um, and also um, assisting with outreach uh, and that sort of thing. You can find out more information about that um, on our website. So how do you go about becoming an endorser? Um, if you go to our website, um, you will find um, a template for a letter of endorsement um, that your um, CEO can sign. Um, you can get in touch with us so that we can give you a Word version of that document. Um, you can simply email us. Our email addresses are um, on the site. Um, you should all also have JIT's email address, so you could go to JIT as well. Um, and then um, you would also publicly announce um, your endorsement of the principles. Um, so the first round of endorsers were announced um, in December on the 18th, um, and the second round, which is, is going quite well um, to date, will be announced on the 19th of January, so just in under in just under a month. Okay, so um, to repeat a little bit of what I said earlier on, um, what is it that we're looking for from you? Um, we would really like your input on the principles, um, and there's three ways that you can really do this. Um, you can visit uh, our online consultation page. Um, you can access that through um, our website, and there um, you can have a look at the principles and the implementation guidance, and there's a number of questions that we ask, uh, some specifically to banks um, and others to banks and stakeholders around the principles. Um, and you can answer those there, um, and we are looking at that uh, feedback uh, fairly frequently, um, and you know um, that then will will feed into um, perhaps amendments um, or give us you know things to think about um, that will then filter into those documents. Um, the second way um, is to attend events, um, as I mentioned earlier on, that will be planned by UNEPFI and or the founding banks. Um, and you can uh, just look out on our website, which we, we, we do um, often update um, those events. Um, so you can find the events um, on the website um, and see what you can attend in your region. And then the third way is to just uh, contact uh, UNEPFI directly. Um, if you have um, questions that perhaps are not addressed um, um, in this webinar. Um, and again, though, we do encourage you to please um, send through your questions or raise your hand at the end of this webinar so that we can address any questions that you might have um, at this time. 
All right, so once again, we encourage um, you to become an endorser, um, so that is banks and stakeholders. Um, and for banks, we further encourage um, them to become signatories. And um, I reiterate um, what was said by the banks earlier on, that any bank can become a signatory if they are genuinely committed to sustainability and responsible banking. Um, the principles were drafted and developed in a way that would allow any bank to come on board um, as long as they're willing to do the work um, and to continuously improve. Um, that's really what is required. Um, so the principles will form the basis of um, Unified Work Program work program going forward, and they'll ultimately replace the statement of commitment. Um, we expect that most um, UNEFI member banks will sign up to the principles within a period of two years. Um, and that brings us to the end um, of our webinar, um, leaving quite a bit of time for, for comments, um, as well for questions and comments. Um, so we do have one question already um, that I will read out, and then I'll ask um, our panelists uh, to take a stab at it. Um, so this question here, I just want to see who it comes from. Elizabeth Acatuno or Acatuno, um, and she says, since it seems that the impacts will be defined by individual banks, how will the overall impact of the sector be measured? Will UNEPFI provide any guidance as to the type of impact? So I will um, hand over to the panelists. Is there anybody who wants to um, take a stab at this? Can I make a first attempt? Go for it, Demetrius. Well, each bank, when signing up to these principles, will be required to come up with its own personal targets and prove that every you know every year that they are improving and reporting on 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 the results. Uh, there is uh, at the moment uh, a discussion uh, within the the group to uh, come up with what we call the collective goal, which means that you know banks that are willing to contribute to a, a collective goal, and this goal. Uh, will most likely be targeting the uh, you know the uh, uh, issue of climate change so we are in the process at the moment of coming up with uh, let's say the methodology and, and so the KPIs uh, for those banks that would like to to contribute to a collective goal so that at the end we can say that you know like this amount of this number of banks after so many years have achieved, uh, you know, uh, reducing carbon emissions or investing so much in, in, in renewable energy and things like that. So we are currently working on, 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 a, on a collective goal. Thanks, Demetrius. Um, so there is a collective goal that um, the banks are considering. Um, it is uh, still very early stages, um, so we'll see how that progresses. Um, just to add to what Demetrius said, um, what's also been discussed around the principles is um, for the signatory banks to come together every two years um, to look at um, you know, how, how they've progressed in implementing the principles um, and to um, issue a report around how the banks have done collectively. Um, so um, I hope that that answers um, your question, um, Elizabeth. Um, if not, please do um, write again. Um, alternatively, you can also put up your hand um, at, at, at the stage. I just want to have a look to see if there are any hands up. All right, Elizabeth, so um, just let us know. Uh, go back to the questions. Okay, all right. So one that comes up quite frequently, is there any cost to signing up to the principles? Um, I can answer this one, or I can hand over to um, the panel, to anybody who wants to respond. Okay, I'll... I'll respond to this one. So um, there is no direct cost to signing up to the principles. 
Um, what is a prerequisite to becoming a signatory to the principle is that a bank needs to be a member of UNEPFA. Um, there is a membership fee that comes with being a member of UNEPFA, um, but that is really the only cost that's associated um, with the principles, and that's really a cost of being a member of UNEPFI and not a cost of um, signing up to the principles. Um, and the cost varies um, depending on the um, assets of a bank. Right, let's see, anything else? Okay, Elizabeth says thank you. Okay, great. All right, so while we wait for other, let's have a look at the hands again. Um, I, I do encourage um, you to ask questions if you have any. Um, I think what is nice. Um, about this session is that um, you know you've got UNEPFI, but then you also have banks that have been in, in, integrally involved um, in developing these principles. So I think it does kind of give a very nice view. Um, and I see that we've got a hand from Rana. So Rana, I am going to unmute you. Um, you are unmuted, and you can go ahead and ask your question. Um, yes, regarding the slide on uh, reporting, I, I don't know if you can hear me clearly first. I can hear you. Okay, perfect. Uh, regarding the slides on reporting and review, oh. like how do you classify starter banks, intermediate banks, and advanced bank? Is that from the date of signing or or, uh, or joining the signatories of the bank, or is that related to how far the bank sees itself in terms of SDGs? Okay, um, I am happy to answer unless uh, we have a panelist that would like to. Um, have a go at this. Okay. This is Emily. Um, go for Emily. <laughs> so I think I mean that's a great question. Um, I think in terms of classifying your, uh, yourself as a starter, intermediate, or advanced bank is uh, really selected by the banks themselves. Um, mm -hmm. As I guess we all know what our in where our institutions are at and and what what conversations have been happening and where where um, it would make sense for the um, for for each of our banks to, to um, enter the principle, so it's really a, a decision taken by each individual bank. Um, mm -hmm. I will say, however, that the guidance is um, kind of a max maximum of two years at the starter and intermediate phase. So this is really meant to be kind of taking steps on a journey. So you, if you start at um, kind of a starter bank phase, then within the next two years, you would expect to kind of move to the intermediate bank stage, for example. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Can, can I add uh, just to, to what Emily said? Yeah, um, uh, it is true that, you know, it, it really relies on your self-assessment. Uh, however, uh, we are working on the uh, principles for responsible backing dashboard, which will be a tool that can help uh, banks decide uh, and, you know, where they stand in terms of, uh, you know, like level of sustainability, whether they're starting immediate or advanced. So that'll be a tool that will soon be released and it will help the banks in assessing where they stand. Perfect. Great. Thank you so much. Thanks, Emily and Demetrius. Um, yeah, I think that um, the dashboard will um, help banks quite a bit. Um, in terms of guiding them as to where they fall. Um, it also brings in some kind of standardization um, in where banks, um, you know, uh, would classify themselves. Um, mm -hmm. So thank you for that response. Thank you. And thank you for the question, Rana. Um, do you have a follow-up question? Uh, not at all. That's very clear then. Okay, fantastic. Thanks, Rana. Okay, um, any more hands? Let us check the questions. So there's a question here about, is membership to UNEPFI open to banking associations? I mean, sorry, to building, to building societies, um, which is 
an interesting question. So, I mean, UNEPFA kind of has three um, different kind of um, areas in terms of there's, there's the banking side, there's the investment side, and there's the insurance um, side of it. Um, and this is specifically banking. So I I think the question is quite broad, um, but I think from a banking perspective, um, I don't think that um, a building society would necessarily um, fall into that particular category. Um, uh, Pauline, um, if I unmute you, perhaps you can just add to that. Um, or substantiate the question. Um, so let me just have a look for you. Pauline, if you would like to speak a bit more on your question, I have unmuted you. Perhaps you can explain the nature of the work that you do so we can see if you would um, fall into any of the other um, working areas of UNEPFI. Okay, Pauline, um, I don't hear anything from you. Perhaps we can take this offline. Um, you can drop us an email um, if you would like, um, and then we can take that further. Go back to the questions. While we're waiting for questions, I, I would like to add, just make a comment, uh, if that's okay. Yes, please go ahead. I, I think it's very important to uh, to explain that you know these these principles that are up now for uh, 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 consultation are not uh, are not the product of just 28 banks that got together. It is also the uh, the uh, a, 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 an effort, a joint effort with uh, representatives from the civil society. Uh, we spoke to a lot of representatives of the civil society. They formed an advisory board. And we also had a lot of consultation from uh, rating agencies, extra financial rating agencies, and and uh, the the principles for responsible investment, multilateral banks. So uh, it, 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 they really these principles really reflect what society uh, and what what the market actually expects of the banks to do. So I just wanted to make that uh, that clear at this point. Thank you very much, Demetrius. Okay, so um, I have some further input from Pauline. She says, building societies are financial services organizations that are member-owned. Um, the customers own the company. Okay, so that sounds a bit like uh, perhaps a, a cooperative. Um, I definitely think that a cooperative would fall into one of the working areas of Unify. Um, so, Pauline, perhaps just drop us an email if you're interested in becoming um, in becoming a, a UNEPFI member, and we will um, take that further. Um, thank you for your question. <coughs> um, and Pauline, just to add, um, in terms of endorsement, um, you know, whether you're a bank or a, a stakeholder, you can you can still endorse principles. But we look forward to hearing further from you um, on this point. Um, okay, great, uh, Pauline, I see you said you'll get in touch with us. That's perfect, uh, thanks. Okay, so um, I think while we wait for further questions to stream in, uh, my suggestion would be that we perhaps cover um, other questions that um, um, we, we normally see. Um, and uh, you know, I think you, we've already covered a lot of them. Um, normally, we get questions around how banks assess um, which level um, uh, with regards to um, the starter, intermediate, and advanced banks. Um, <clears throat> um, another one that we get quite often that I think I've, I've, I've covered um, is whether you need to be a UNEFI member to be a signature of the principles. Um, and yes, you do, although it may be worth noting that you do not need to be a UNEPFI member um, to endorse the principles. Of course, endorsing the principles as a bank, um, you would signify um, your intention to become a signatory and therefore you would need to 
um, you'd need to become a UNEPFI member, um, you know, around September um, when the principles become available uh, for signature. Um, another frequently asked question is around what differentiates uh, the principles from um, existing initiatives. Um, and I think that would be nice to, to um, kind of get feedback from, um, from the core group banks. Uh, so I open that up to you, um, Emily, Ginny, uh, Murray, you haven't heard from you in a while, if you're still on the line, um, and Demetrius. Um, is there anybody who would like to, to answer that question? Hearing a lot of silence. Are there any takers? Um, I'm happy to, oh, you go. <laughs> no, no, you go, you go. I'll, I'll just kick us off by saying I, I think this is quite a unique um, framework in terms of really kind of looking at the international frameworks, but then really localizing it um, as well. Um, I, and so for us, I think the kind of the the ability to apply this to kind of our um, operations across uh, across the world and, and really the principle-based approach is something that we don't have from other um, frameworks. So I think there's a lot of really great tactical um, frameworks that we also really like to work with. Um, but th this specifically as, as a kind of principle-based framework is something that is hugely valuable, um, we think, and, and really necessary. Thanks, Emily. Um, Demetrius, is there anything you want to add there? Well, I just I just wanted to add that basically these principles provide a vision, uh, you know, what we want to achieve and how banks can play their uh, the, the role, uh, their the the role that they sh they can and they should be playing in developing a sustainable society, a sustainable economy, in 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 uh, uh, delivering the SDGs or contributing to. Uh, um, achieving the SDGs and, and the Paris uh, uh, Climate Agreement. So they, these principles have a holistic approach and they really uh, bring together the various um, uh, departments, the various um, sectors, sections within a bank, uh, you know, breaking the silo uh, way of working. So I think they really have a, a very synthetic, a very holistic uh, uh, approach. And, and it's something that we do need in the 21st century. Thank you, um, Demetrius and Emily, for that. Um, a further question um, that we often get is, um, uh, it, it goes something like this. So the principles and implementation guidance appear to have already been um, developed uh, to quite an advanced stage. Um, and how much scope is there for making changes to these documents? Um, what I would like, uh, Demetrius, sorry for putting you on the spot, um, but perhaps you might want to have a go, and then perhaps Emily as well, um, being actually, no, I think Demetrius, uh, I think this would uh, pertain to the subgroup that you do a lot of work in, um, so perhaps you, you may have a, a thing or two to say. I will have to give it a thought. Can, can you can you just repeat the question, Pauline? Because I was something just happened in my office now. So if you can repeat the question, I'm sure that I can respond. No, no problem. So the question is: the principles and the implementation guidance appear to already be at an advanced stage in their development. How much scope is there uh, for making changes? And this question was asked um, really in the context of asking for feedback. Um, and really asking whether, um, you know, will we take the feedback on and will we make changes um, where necessary? Well, that is a, that's a very good question. Uh, there's, there's definitely been a lot of work put into these, uh, these, uh, the principles and the implementation guidance. Uh, but, um, uh, you know, bear in mind that this is the results of uh, 28 banks and, and a few other stakeholders. So I guess uh, you, now that it's gone out public, Globally, uh, there there are there is room for you know like for any um, changes, any amendments, and we, 
also bear in mind that sometimes it's the little details that can make a difference. So uh, I think that it's very, very important that we do get this, uh, this, uh, this feedback. We are already receiving feedback and we're in the process of, of, of uh, uh, looking at it and, 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 and seeing, you know, what we can take on board. Uh, so uh, I, I, I strongly suggest that, that, you know, that we do, uh, that, you know, all the banks and all other stakeholders do provide uh, their feedback because there is room until the final completion, which will be by, you know, May the 31st, if I'm, uh, if I'm correct, um, uh, that there, there's those there will be time and, and space to make uh, some, you know, any changes. Okay, perfect. Um, thanks a lot, Demetrius. Um, another question that we see often um, is around the relationship between the principles um, and regulation. And so there really, um, the principles are of, uh, a voluntary framework. Um, banks choose to, to sign up. Um, whereas um, regulation is obviously uh, mandatory and must be followed and there's consequences um, if, if, if you don't um, from your government or from regulators. But where the principles, I think the principles can really help support um, banks in um, kind of um, meeting um, or complying um, with uh, sustainability regulations. I know that there's a lot of governments or regulators um, globally that are working um, on um, regulations around sustainability. So I think um, the, the first part is that um, the principles can really help banks um, in complying with those regulations by kind of giving guidance um, on the things that banks can do um, you know, to be more sustainable. Um, and I think the second part is that it's it gives an impression to your regulators, a, a bank that does sign up and a bank that, um, you know, does the work and develops um, and embeds sustainability um, in, you know, their everyday operations. Um, regulators will look at that kind of bank as, you know, a bank that um, understands its risks, um, a bank that, um, you know, is um, looking at more than, uh, you know, just the, the profit margin, but is uh, socially responsible. Um, so, Demetrius, you also um, added uh, to this this morning. Is there anything further um, that you'd want to add to um, that answer, answer that I've just given to that question? Um, well, I, I, I think that, you know, regulation is plays a very, very important role. And, you know, coming from Europe and uh, because, you know, banks in Europe do have a heavy regulation and the experience is that, you know, what starts off as an, uh, um, a voluntary uh, initiative on behalf of banks, uh, given a few years, it turns into some uh, regulation, some kind of directive. That, that's, that's the uh, experience we have in Europe. And, and I feel that, you know, like uh, banks that uh, sign up to these principles will actually be ahead of the curve and they'll actually be prepared for any kind of regulation that might come in any part of the world. Because I think that, uh, you know, as we uh, governments and, and international organizations realize that, you know, our planet needs some drastic uh, action now if we want to, to keep on, you know, like living uh, in the society that we know and having, a, you know, like a healthy economy and all the rest, that sooner or later uh, regulation is going to become strict. So banks uh, that already uh, assigned to these principles will be prepared if and when any regulation will come. That's a very good point, um, Demetrius, and, 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 and I think uh, very true um, to the principles I think are ahead of uh, most regulatory developments. And so any bank that actually does um, sign up and you know um, progress um, in line with the principles will likely be ahead of the regulatory curve. Um, and as I think most of us know, regulation eventually does uh, catch up with um, a lot of these uh, international frameworks. Um, and so I think it does uh, place a bank quite well um, uh, to come on board. All right, um, so we have a question here from um, Kim Stevenson, and she says, is there an exemplary bank that has developed principles you can share with us to see an example of the principles? Um, Kim, I'm not quite clear on the question, and I'm wondering a bit whether 
the question is more around implementation of the principles um, or perhaps um, the setting of targets um, as opposed to developing principles. Um, I would really um, appreciate some clarity around that. So maybe you can send a follow-up question. Alternatively, I, I can unmute you. Um, it's up to you how you um, substantiate, but I will try to unmute you um, in case you, you would like to speak. Um, you are unmuted. So yeah, hi, um, it's about setting of targets. That's the question. Just just a template or a model that other banks have produced that we could take a look at. It could be cleaned up so that we don't see any names, but to get a sense of how others are thinking about this. Okay, Kim, I think that's, um, that's quite a good question and thanks for, for clarifying. So. I think my, my, my response to that would be that because the principles are so new and not actually finalized yet, um, and you know, um, these 28 uh, banks have been working on them since April um, to get them to the point where they are now, um, there isn't a bank that I would say has set targets um, in line with the principles as yet. Um, but I know that um, some of the banks, um, especially the more advanced banks, um, are starting to look into this, um, looking at how they can do this. So I think that probably um, around the time that we sign, um, we should be in a position to, if not only share some implementation plans from some of the banks, to maybe actually also share um, some of the targets that they've set. Um, I also think that uh, perhaps and hopefully um, in the some of the events that are hosted, um, over the consultation period by the founding banks, um, that banks would be in a position to perhaps share um, on the process that they're going through um, in setting implementation plans for how they will implement the principles, um, but also, um, you know, how that target setting process um, is going. Um, so, in short, um, it's early days, um, but the work is um, starting to happen. Um, and we'll see results, I think, in, in a few months. I think some banks will have something to share. Um, does that answer your question, Kim? Yes, it does. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you very much for your question. Okay. Um, let's see if we have more questions. Okay, um, we don't have any more questions. Um, just from the panelists, are there any other questions that um, you've come across or come across uh, frequently um, that you would like to raise um, and perhaps address? Um, I would also just encourage um, the panelists um, where perhaps you know you didn't quite understand clearly um, anything in the presentation. Um, please do also raise it, and we can just. Um, clarified for you now. Um, but over to the panelists, um, are there any other questions um, that you know you frequently come across that you want to share? Hi, Pauline. This is Ginny. Um, I guess I just want to add maybe, you know, coming into, a, you know, I represent ICBC, which is, uh, some of you might know, one of the largest banks in the world by ourselves. But actually, you know, we are um, very sensitive to the fact that a lot of what, uh, what we, we, we would call advanced uh, um, you know, processes or banks that have been very um, experienced in this process are probably some of the European banks, I would say. Um, but I think from if you're coming from other regions or nationalities, I think sometimes it is also very, very um, crucial to to know that this is driven by UNEP, so actually it's an internationally, you know, encompassing type of initiative. So I think for us, the most important thing is to be sensitive about national, uh, um, you know, current and national principles, national, uh, you know, um, regulations as well, and also about how banks need to not only embrace these principles, but many, many others. 
Um, <clears throat> so I think some of the key questions I had in particular when I came in is about how, you know, you know, in terms of implementation, accountability, how that actually fits in with national strategies. So what I've, uh, you know, so far come to conclude is actually it's an evolving process. I don't think anyone has the right answer. I mean, we just had a question about what is the sort of industry best practice. I don't think anyone can say that there is a industry best practice, but we can learn from each other. That's the key thing. I think um, for us, it's particularly interesting to see that there are different nationalities across Africa, across Asia that are represented in the in the core group. So I think learning from peers uh, certainly help. And also, as I, I outlined in my section about implementation, I think different banks have different interests because many of us, for example, uh, operate in certain sectors and, and others are, are lending to other sectors. So I think it's a very, very much a, uh, you know, you take and embrace the principles itself and the approach and the framework and then apply it to your own, um, you know, bank strategies. Um, so the involvement is key because it's actually, you know, the, the whole way that it's designed is to try and address feedback from even those that are not within the kind of core group uh, community because we, we try to engage as much as possible with um, others to try and uh, improve and develop the way that uh, we design these frame, uh, these uh, tools, toolkits and uh, guidance. Um, so I think that's just a little bit, maybe it's not really a question, but <laughs> probably more of a personal experience from my part as one of the, um, I guess, emerging market um, um, members of, of the you know, for five, the principles, the core group. Jenny, th thank you um, for sharing that actually, because I think um, we, I don't think it's always stressed enough um, when we talk about um, banks aligning uh, their portfolios, we often talk about um, the big international frameworks, um, being the, um, the SDGs um, and the climate uh, agreement, or shall I call them the big international agreement. Um, so the SDGs and the Paris Climate Agreement. Um, but I mean, it's also um, about aligning with your national and regional um, frameworks. And the reason why that is included um, is because there is a recognition that, you know, um, banks operate within a context. Um, you operate within um, a certain environment, um, regionally and nationally. And for example, um, that actually feeds into um, you know, what your climate goal will look like um, as much as it feeds into um, which SDGs you'll focus on and what uh, goals or targets um, you'll set in relation to that. So I think that is uh, that, that was very relevant uh, to bring up. Um, I know that Marius uh, also wants to um, make a comment. Uh, Marius, please go ahead. Thank you, Poland. I think I do not have the echo behind me this time. Uh, I just wanted to make a comment around the question about setting the targets. Um, we, we, what we have been uh, talking about in the past few months is that, uh, of course, we do need to be very active with our stakeholders in an external work, working with clients, with, with customers, with regulators as set up in the principles that I presented. We, we of course, need to, to take the opportunities to encourage for best practices with our clients and our customers to create incentives. But around the setting of targets uh, for, for the impact that we have in the areas that we have define we have impact, I do believe that it, it is also setting the principles to have an adequate and advanced uh, governance structure within the bank. So what I wanted to point out is, is that um, to set the targets, we, we really need to do that internal work, which is also very, very important to integrate sustainability committees or however each bank wants to define it or create it, to integrate the, the different areas of the bank in, in a higher level, uh, the, the top management uh, positions around credit, around risk, around legal, working with the sustainability areas, is is the only way to make possible for for everybody to to under
understand the areas of impact and afterwards in a journey that will take some time for, for the different banks depending on their level of integration of sustainability. But it's the only way to make possible to set up with the different areas of the bank and also the different um, uh, operations areas of the bank, not only credit, risk, legal, but also maybe corporate banking or um, government banking as we have in, in, in Banorte in Mexico. So I think that the internal work is key to be able to, to set the targets of impact uh, around the areas that we define are, are where we can have the most positive impact and where we can um, uh, decline the negative impact that we may have. So I, I really would focus on, on the adequate governance within the bank. Perfect. Thank you very much, Marius. Um, I think that um, that kind of implementation context um, is very um, helpful. Okay. Um, I think if there aren't any more questions, and I will give a minute to just see if there's any hands uh, or questions that come in. Um, but if not, then that would bring us to the end of this webinar. Have a quick look. Yes, so there are no more questions um, and there are no more hands. So I think uh, with that, we can conclude. Um, I'd like to thank all of um, our panelists, our speakers uh, from the core group banks. Um, thank you very much uh, for participating. I will just put up the slide with uh, those who have uh, presented uh, today. So thank you to Demetrius from Piraeus to Marius from Banorte, to Emily from um, Barclays, uh, to Ginny from um, ICBC um, for participating. And thank you um, to our participants um, for joining the webinar. Um, if you have any further questions that weren't addressed, um, please do get in touch with us. Um, we're more than happy to um, answer those for you. Otherwise, uh, please do um, provide us with input. All right, um, have a good um, morning, afternoon, evening um, to everybody on the line. Um, and with that, I will end the webinar. Thank you and goodbye. Thank, thank you very much, Pulen. Goodbye, everyone. Okay, bye. Thank you, Pulen. Goodbye, thank everybody. Thank you, Pulen. All right, goodbye.